is a new kind of thing in the realm of the Strymon Iridium. Now I think the Strymon Iridium when it came out was kind of a bit of a new idea in that it had I guess kind of the same sorts of things as we've seen from like the Sans amp kind of range where you have you know three amps and cabs within a small unit and it's kind of to go at the end of a pedal board or within a pedal board. Now some of the things that people like myself said about the Strymon Iridium was that maybe we'd like it if that room setting on the end had uh, a bit more options in terms of other reverbs that you could use. Another thing that people pointed out was that you couldn't have um, effects after the Iridium in your headphones because the headphones essentially came from the Strymon Iridium so in a traditional board where you had your delays and reverbs after the amp You'd have to put that in the front of the Iridium if you wanted it in your headphones, and there's no effects loop on the Strymon Iridium. Uh, other things, maybe people that uh, prefer like higher gain amps were missing some things from the Strymon Iridium. You know, there was kind of pretty much classic rock territory tones in there. You know, sort of like a boost into a Vox AC30 or a boost into a Marshall or a boost into a Fender Deluxe Reverb. Um, so people that were going for kind of higher gain tones or the rockier metal end of things potentially weren't catered to and that's some of the kind of negatives of, of the Strymon Iridium amongst what was universally pretty much positive stuff. It, it definitely did exactly what it said on the tin. The Boss IR200 is their version of this kind of thing and it's got more amps than the uh, Strymon Iridium and it has three bass amps as well. So you've got some kind of heavier stuff in there, a Bogner Ubershell, um, and one of the Boss kind of high gain original amps that they've got, as well as a Fender Twin, as well as a Roland Jazz Chorus, as well as uh, a Fender Tweed Combo, 
as well as a Marshall stack, as well as the Vox. Now, it's also got an effects return, which is useful for a bunch of people, and the reverb part of it can be a hall or a studio, and can go between 0 and 10 seconds. Um, my kind of initial verdict on it would be that I think it does answer some of those questions that people had after the Iridium very well. It's also really nice that it's an audio interface. The kind of one negative that I'd say in comparison to the Strymon Iridium might be that it's easier to make this sound quite harsh and fizzy. The Iridium was actually very user friendly and very kind of difficult to get a bad sound out of. In my experience, in my opinion, you can get bad sounds out of this quite easily. The other cool thing about this, I guess, which is easier than the Strymon Iridium, if you wanted to bypass amps, for instance, you just long hold this. If you wanted to bypass cabinets, you just long hold this. And if you wanted to bypass the ambience, uh, as in the reverb, you just hold this. All of those tasks, or you know, changing the, the reverb size and type on the Iridium was a little bit more complicated than that. That's, I think, a win for the IR200 as well. So, worth giving it a try, I'd imagine, if you were looking for some of those things. It doesn't do dual amps at the same time, which I think the Warus Audio, is it the ACS one, can do, so that might be worth a look for some folks. But generally, this kind of solves the issues that I had with the GT1000 Core, because it's so much of a simpler device, the user interface is less unwieldy. So, yeah, let's take a closer look. Okay, so presumably you will have heard of the Boss IR200 if you've happened across this channel. There's been quite a lot of paid reviews of it. I wanted to grab hold of one just to see what they're like. If you know the history of me on the channel, I've tried the Boss GT1000 Core and I found that the user interface was kind of blocking me from getting on with that unit too much. So I thought the IR200 is a bit simpler. It can do less things, you know, essentially you can do an amp, cab and reverb. Um, as well as like noise suppressors and EQs, but I thought if there's less things to to do with the UI, then in theory we might be able to get some better results out of it. So, so here's preset one and what it sounds like straight out of the box. So you see you've got these controls along the front. Um, in terms of what this is doing, it's essentially the same kind of concept as the Strymon Iridium, which was um, the idea of doing like a simple amp and cab type setup. So we've got gain level. So this is the natural kind of thing. So ambience we can turn up and this will be our reverb. And we've got a few different types of reverb, which is nice. So if we hold in ambience, we can change the type of reverb or just turn it off. Sorry, if you hold it in, turn it, hold it in long to turn off or on. So if I hold it in long, So now if I turn it back on again, we can press it just to get some different types of reverb. So if you listen to what changes here. I don't think there's a massive difference between the reverbs. But this time or like decay thing is useful. So the max decay on here, let's 
find out what that is. 10 seconds. And then other options, we've got tone, so we could brighten up this hall if we wanted to. So that's kind of cool. I think realistically it would have been nice to have a spring as an option on there right but as i say we can turn on or off the reverb with a long hold and then tap it if you want to kind of change between hall studio and room and our kind of max decay on these is one uh, 10 seconds <laughs> So you can get kind of a slightly more extreme um, reverbs than you can on the Iridium, um, but still no spring, which to me, if you're kind of doing classic amps, part of that tone for me is the spring reverb. So it makes sense, I think, to, to try and put one of those in there. The other things going on here, so if we turn this knob here, the amp knob, we can get different amps, so that's natural. And it keeps, I think, the settings that you've got on the face of the unit. As you switch through the units, you've got the JC120, so like a jazz clean. Jazz chorus, sorry. And then you've got a twin, so I'll just turn the gain down for this. Um, Uh, what else have we got? We've got the Vox type amp. And for this, I guess we might as well just change the cab whilst we're here. So if we go right to the end, I believe we have some Celestian options. Uh, where are we? So I want like a Celestian blue if I can. Here we go. Um, so this is with a 421 mic. Um. What we don't have though is the cut control that you'd have on an actual Vox type amp um, and the things like the, the settings are kind of generic if that makes sense. If we hold in amp we can bypass it so it could just be a cab loader. Uh, let me just press it in because on page two or three we can switch the gain up higher or lower. So you could have like a higher gain version of a Vox amp. like that gain switch or we could have a high gain version so 
So I guess that's kind of neat. And you've also got a solo switch option uh, if you want to boost in the preset with a, a extension pedal, uh, which the control for the connection for is here on the side. So that's kind of useful, um, sort of similar to something that you might do with the favorite switch on the actual Iridium. That's more or less what we can do with this. If you press menu, um, we go into memory. So memory is like means this particular preset, I think. And you can make setting changes here. Um, I think that would be setting for different types of guitar. I need to check that out. Um, or amp settings, what does that do? Okay, so that's just more of the same. Uh, noise suppression, so we can have like a, a noise gate here. So if you're finding things a bit noisy, you could bring that threshold up. And you can change the release time, so I guess that's an, a neat little feature. Um, particularly if you're playing like in a noisy venue and but I've got a slightly noisy room here to be honest um, what else have we got we've got send and return then we've got these cabinet options so if I unlink these you can see that you can basically mismatch cabinets if you want to cab um, but right so like we got the 4x12 Bogner here and then other options we've got mic level so I guess this is basically changing your cab level direct mix which I'm not imagining you're gonna want with driven tones um, and I think you've got a couple of different mic choices for each of the cabs. Um, so the cab choices are okay, I think. And if we go back, we just have a look at some more of the amps that are included. So now what have we got? This is the... Uh, let me just check. I'm not doing anything stupid with the amp. Uh, we'll put this back to low and then come back here. So we've got Tweed Combo. sound of that. Maybe I should save that just in case. I'll save this to number seven. Um, so I've only had this for the, well not long at all. Let's put this up here. 76 is I think where I've got some other stuff going on. 77. So let's just save it here. Uh, enter. I'll just change this to J. Jatral and enter execute. So I'm getting used to how it works. So that's a tweed combo, I quite like the sound of that. X high gain, if we boost the gain on here. So you've got some high gain kind of choices which you don't have on the Iridium so much. So that's kind of cool. And then you've got a Bogner Überschall for some reason.
So there's no presence control on here, which would be uh, kind of useful, I think, for these higher gain tones. But if you go into the menu um, and memory on the third page, you've got EQs. So you can change this to like a graphic EQ. I've got A and B linked at the moment. You could have it acting differently on each side. Um, and then you've got, you know, a typical graphic EQ. So you could take down some of these highs if you wanted to. So if you're finding things a bit fizzy or whatever, you could do this kind of thing. Um, Stream, obviously because I didn't have it turned on so let's just keep that and then just tame these down so you've got up to minus 20 dB on each of those so that's quite a lot of power for shaping so let's just go back there graphic off So that's useful. Um, not necessarily easy to see if you've got that EQ on or not though, I'd say. So that's potentially a little bit of a issue potentially if you're making quick changes. And then you've got the three bass amps. Uh, natural bass, what was that for? Concert bass, X drive, natural. So that's kind of a quick look at what's going on there. I think I covered it. Also, it's, a, a, it's an audio interface, which is handy. Um, so some things to really like, it's got quite a lot of memory options. I've seen a couple of other reviews in comparisons with the Strymon Iridium which weren't quite accurate. So the Strymon Iridium, you, if you use a favourite switch you can have up to five tones on it. Uh, the multi-switch it's called isn't it? Alongside the favourite switch you can have the other three and then whatever's on the face of the unit itself. And then also you've got the actual MIDI accessible user slots. This Obviously, I'd say with the screen on it, um, kind of gives you access to those things easier. Uh, also, you've got quite a lot more cabinets potentially load onto the IR200. The sounds themselves, I'm not having an issue with, um, but let's try and dial in some other bits and pieces and I'll see if I can put together a half decent intro. But let me know in the comments if this was the product that you were waiting for. Um, it can't load dual amps, but you know, it's got one amp, two cabs. Um, potential for three sort of different reverbs and those can go up to 10 seconds each noise suppressor built in audio interface built in and that solo switch I guess is really handy too if you were actually using this and I guess one of the other kind of cool things about it is you've got the full range of gain and even on this tweed combo for instance if you were to go into the amp and go over to this low gain switch thing, we could turn this into a high gain amp. So I think it's a little bit more complicated to use than the Strymon Iridium straight out of the box. I would say that. But if you're trying to do the more complicated things on the Strymon Iridium, like change the room length or, you know, disable IRs or disable amps, there was a whole lot of, like, uh, boot things that you had to remember to do. So you had to hold down a button as you turn the thing on. I think from that point of view, having the actual screen on the unit makes a lot of sense once you start to do the more complicated things. In terms of sound, I think the Strymon Iridium had some really, really cool sound. So I might try and do some comparison in the future but I say I think I prefer this as an experience to using the GT1000 core just because it's a little bit more obvious where everything is because you've got so much less to kind of contend with there is also an output option for your headphones if I go into system phones you can turn on this like surround sound thing and turn up ambience in your headphones but that does push things to mono in the front of your headphones so I don't know if that's 
it's supposed to happen, but that's what was happening for me. Um, but yeah, generally pretty cool, I think, as a first impression. Hopefully that was vaguely interesting to one or two people that were looking for an unbiased review of the IR200. That's basically what it sounds like out of the box, and I'll try and, you know, put some tones together with it now. Cheers.